So I make loads of videos showing people how similar often new drivers are to ones gone by, how drivers haven't really changed. But today, in this ridiculously cold morning, I'm gonna share with you my top five reasons why you should change your driver, why you should get a new driver, and why I would look at a new driver and try and improve my golf through it. Let's get to Honiton and show you reason one why you might need a new driver. This is the number one reason here. See what we've got? There's snow on the floor. No golf, no fun. So number one reason you need a new driver is because it's a load of fun. It's true, bright, shiny, new things with different ideas, shapes, different sounds, different feels. There's different stories of each one. Can totally inspire different ideas and make you start practicing more, make you start having fun a bit more because you like your new shiny thing. Reason one, it's as basic as that. Bright, shiny, new golf equipment. I think it's fun. If you think it's fun, number one reason. It's a good one. Point two, you should be changing your driver if your old one is old, like old. Now, this old Nike, the techs moved on. They never did that well with clubs Nike, but they tried to do their marketing machine. Um, and that one didn't really ever really perform because it wasn't made very well. And it's not that old. There are clubs from this generation and before that do still perform, but I'm talking old as in like old, you know? The needle has shift if you start going back into these genres. And this one's even got a cheeky little rattle in it. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I could still play with these. You can still generate some good speed with these. You'll be amazed that they are actually not as bad as often you would think. But I mean, that's instantly off the top of the head and it's gonna be a low spin dipper. I want the bigger head of a modern driver. I want the weight stretched back for lots of people or of a modern driver. I might even want options of changeable necks, changeable weights. There is definitely options out there now that would help you over this. Now, if you've got something in this era or before and you still enjoy your golf and you're playing well, then yeah, don't change it. But if you came to me for a custom fit back in the day using something like this, I know I could probably statistically find an improvement, like in the numbers. Like for anyone watching all my other videos, you see that the numbers are always so close for modern drivers because I'm trying literally, you know, modern drivers. They're not really shifting the needle, but you'll be amazed what some golfers pull out of their bags. And I just think, okay, well, I mean, you could make golf easier for yourself there and some don't need to or want to, but others do. If your driver is old and you have to go quite a long way back for it to be called old now, where it would make a difference, then absolutely there can be some gains to be found in your equipment. The same version of you, that's a 150 ball speed. That's like my old swing and I did, that felt decent. Definitely updating. And I don't mean spending loads of money, I don't care how much you spend on your driver. This isn't a video saying go and spend loads of money on new drivers. You can get more modern and current than this era and before on eBay in places for next to no money that perform. I mean, this is a Ping G10. Um, instantly, the ball speeds are back up to my normal amount. 160 ball speed, it's a Ping G10. So this would be classed as old and you probably might not need to improve it. But if you have something going back older than these things, you're definitely leaving numbers on the table. Number three reasons why you can treat yourself to a new driver is shot shaping, curvature. So the different drivers promote different shapes. And that's why often in a set of drivers, you know, so I've got a Strix and ZX5 here, they got a ZX7, they don't shape the same way. The seven's a little bit more fady as a standard and the five is a little bit more jewelry. Now look, that doesn't mean that they won't shape, but if I have a bad shot like that, which is a high toe, which will overdraw for me, and that's something that just keeps repeating in my game, I might choose to use a driver that when I hit my bad shot like that, it doesn't curve as much. It will still draw, but I'll have a more fade bias one and it'll tend to hang on a little bit more. And then work my stock shot, which might be like straight to a little draw, which with the fading one might turn in straight to a little fade work that into my game to counteract my bad shot. But remember, drivers aren't gonna stop. So this is more drawy, but you can see that one just falling off to the right. That's gonna happen because they can only do 
fine amounts. But those fine amounts, when I'm playing, you know, I'm looking for fine improvements. I'm looking to hit one less toey draw every 36 holes. Or I'm going to accept that I hit one toey draw every 36 holes. But if I'm using a driver, that means that ball goes only 15 yards or 25 yards left rather than 35 yards left then I might think, well, that's a small gain that might, in certain situations, keep me in play. Stop a lost shot, stop a double bogey, stop a drop shot. That's before you start looking at things like draw models. And again, don't think these will turn your fade into a draw. They'll tend to calm down the amount of curvature that you put in. But if your curvature is the way of the driver, then it will exaggerate it. So if you're fading it and you pick up a draw driver, it might keep a few bits straighter. You're still going to hit fades. You might hit the odd draw, but it's generally going to calm it down. So shot shaping for drivers is absolutely something that could really shift the needle for your golf game. If you understand your patterns, well, this is a draw driver for me, and I definitely would have to aim this more down the right. Um, it's something I would still be able to play golf with, I don't need to change it. I could still go out and enjoy myself, but I would have to work it in. So changing your driver to work with you might be an option which allows you just to shave half a shot around. Every 36 holes, it might shave 0.2 of a shot. Whatever it is, it's marginal, but it can make a difference. This is the TSR from Titleist. This is the three. I've gained prior models of this club in the past, and I game an equivalent almost of this now in the current. And this one has a general fade bias so if i'm hitting shots that i need to just fall off to the right i'm playing some golf where i'm scared of it turning too far left because whatever i'm working on is making it turn further left then rather than go for the two in this i would go for the three again tiny differences but it absolutely plays into my mind of what i want to come out the other end that was a 163 ball speed if anyone's wondering old-fashioned drivers over there from the earlier points. <laughs> so yeah, working in shot shaping ideas. Definitely see them as refinements. Look at that, I felt like that was a straight shot. You see it just falling off to the right. That might annoy me. It might make me think this club's great. I can just aim up the left and let that fall off. They definitely have bias. We definitely have bias. They need to be married. This is definitely one of the key reasons, I think, you could buy a new driver if you've not thought about these ideas already. And the last tip really links to this idea as well. So stay tuned for the last one. But number four, before we do the last one, if you've not been custom fit before, then you can learn so much. And I've said this for years now and the message still gets lost and it's a shame, but getting custom fit for so many golfers can teach them so much about their game. So I mean getting custom fit from someone who can understand how your movements then apply to the movement of this and the energies and forces you put through this. For me, a custom fit, if you, look, if you wanna do custom fits properly, let's forget selling clubs, let's forget trying 100 million shafts, let's forget thinking all the real kind of fun, ideas of screwing stuff in and all that. You know, obviously that can have an effect and that's part of it and it's still important. But the fitter needs to understand the person being fitted, their capabilities, their movement patterns, how they're using the ground, why they're creating the shots they create, why they create the dynamic loft that they create, those kind of ideas. So if you get fit by someone who understands coaching as well, in my opinion, you get the best of both worlds. Whenever I was fitting as a coach, I was always thinking, if I can give them a club that makes them better, why would I not do that? But if I can give them a swing fort that makes them better, often you would find that would shift the needle way more than a new driver. Doing it all together was just like the perfect. So many people go to custom fits and they're buying something new, which is fine. This video is about buying new clubs and that's all fun, half of your fun from the other reasons. But they're building it into movement patterns that you just think, why would you want to build it around that movement pattern? Let me give you an idea. This is a 10.5 degree draw driver. I need an 8.5, an eight. I can even go down to seven lofts because I deliver a lot of lofts. So a 10.5 degree driver, you would say is, worthless to me, it's useless, you'd come down in loft. Well, yes and no. 
if you give someone a 10.5 driver, but then ask them to hit the ball low with a 10.5 driver, they start to learn how to move in the ground, how to change their action, how to use their grip, how to do things that might encourage some better movement. For a driver that's actually not right for them, but the other way, that driver there launched at 13 degrees, 160 ball speed, uh, 112 club head speed. It's just, my numbers were different because you gave me a driver where I had to push and pull and twist differently to get it to perform. The amount of golfers, I've given them what would be inter kind of interpreted as the wrong club, the shift of movement pattern, to then look at fitting them in the future is just huge. Rather than just going, right, you, you present loads of loft, so I'm going to give you a seven degree loft. Now, think about why they might produce, um, or they might produce loads of loft. Let's say this eight degree tight list doesn't go in the air enough for me. So now what I'm going to do is going to go my weak grip, ball forwards, handle back, because I want to deliver loft, but it's encouraging me to hit my massive curvature. I've delivered 18 degrees of loft there at the speed I'm swinging at, it's about right. But with this club, I had to butcher everything I do into building into my swing faults that you might have walked into. See, the club can beat your swing faults for lots of people, but it can also enhance them, enhance them in the wrong way, enhance them to have more curvature, enhance more of a poor movement, which is why for me, they have to be done together with someone who understands movements more than someone who just understands every marketing bit around a shaft. If you're not being fit, get fit. And when you go for your fit, ask questions. Why am I doing that? Why is there too much loft there? Why do I hit that one out the toe? Why does that deliver this way or that way? And don't be fooled by them always saying, well, it's because we need a different this or a different that. It'll be your movement patterns. It'll be your interpretation of the club that you see. Learning them is far more valuable than just buttering over it with sellotape, trying to patch it up. That's, that's a go round in circle kind of golfing. The golf breeds and makes money off that kind of circle. Get fit by someone who understands their swing. That's my advice. Right, and the last item, reason, excuse, permission to buy a new driver. And this one's really important and gets forgotten about. It's because your swing changes. So for me, someone who's changed their swing, I've changed my speed. I, my shape of shots changes, as I remarked about earlier, makes me wanna use the shaping options. They change as my swings and my, you know, whatever I'm working on. You just go and change coach who starts working with ground reaction forces or uses a launch monitor one hasn't before or has some kind of system there they want all their players if it fades or draws or whatever it is and you buy in, you might need to buy a new piece of equipment. Obviously, you don't need to. You can manage it and work it into the lesson as well. So it's not saying that you have a swing change and you have to. What I mean more is that if you do have a swing change, it might open the door up now for bigger suggestions of what you could do with your driver because a swing change can deliver a different face angle, create different shapes, your shaping option. It can encourage a different launch angle because you encourage different dynamic lofts at impact. So the loft you deliver at impact is now different. So you need to now work that into a loft change in a driver. Um, you might start missing the sweet spot more. So you might go for something which is as friendly as possible. So many options. So swing change links back to the shot shaping as well. And I think it's one that lots of people forget. Whenever I've made swing changes with, so, with golfers, you know, the first thing I'm checking when I've got time with them is, has it worked with all their clubs? Have we fixed something but developed another hole? There's no point fixing one part and just wrecking another part of their game because you're now that delivery doesn't work with their hybrid or what have you. When it comes to buying new drivers, what have I missed? There's your five reasons, in my opinion. If someone was to say, why do I need a new driver? They are maybe my top five. Which ones have I missed? Let me know in the comments down below. The bright, shiny new things, obviously, is always the fun one. I love getting new golf equipment through. I love testing it. I love seeing what the manufacturers are talking about. I love learning from their tests because they do lots of tests. It's great. You enjoy it as well. Yes, they're all very similar, but they can be quite different as well. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Thanks, as always, for watching.